Okay, good night. This is um, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, September 19th, 2024. Um, and this uh, meeting is a hybrid meeting. There's a Zoom uh, in the main meeting room here, uh, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Massachusetts. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of Deerfield Municipal Offices in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A. Anyone intending to record the meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. Do I need to read the rest of that, Amy, the remote meeting connection? Um, I don't know. I'll read it. The remote meeting connection noted below. It has the dial-in number 312-626-6799, 929-205-6099, or 833-548-0276, U.S. toll-free. The meeting ID 911-604-1580, passcode 570012. The URL I will not read. The meeting <laughs> candidates, the meeting attendees should mute phones. The number six or star six, I'm sorry, for landlines. Unless asking a question or commenting, all attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Okay, uh, so we can call the meeting to order, which I so do, and we'll do a roll call. I don't see anyone who's a member online. So, uh, Mark Brennan, David Sharp, Sharp Laura Pontani, Laura Pontani present, Tia Christensen, Tia Christensen present, Dan Meach, Dan Meach is present, David Potter present. Next order of business is to approve two sets of minutes. Uh, the first we'll take a look at is from... Um, Actually, I'm Steve. sorry, David. Do you want to just um, officially make Tia a voting member before we go on? Uh, I can do that, yep. We can acknowledge that uh, Tia Christensen uh, will be a voting member uh, for uh, this hearing. Um, and uh, we uh, have Laura and Dan as members of the conversation, but uh, will not partake in any motions or decisions. I'm sorry, misspoken. Um, can, can I ask that the other participants speak into the microphone? We can't hear you if you don't speak into the microphone. Yes. I was here last time. Yeah. Uh, yep. Acknowledge, yes, my mistake. Laura was here, as is in the minutes we're about to approve. Okay. Um, and so um, we also include Tia. So, um, and we'll, you know, we'll see, we'll see how that uh, goes. But I think. Um, we should uh, be clear, I think if, uh, you know, because typically we're a four member board, right? So if anybody else should not make a, any further meetings, um, then you're still in play. <laughs> okay, all right, thank you. So um, now I'm gonna proceed. We'll talk about the, uh, we'll take a motion to approve the minutes of August 29th, 2024. Motion approved to approve the minutes of August 29th, 2024. Second. Thank you. That was Mark Brennan on the second, and David Sharp made the motion. Anybody have any questions or comments? Hearing none, seeing none, shall we go to the vote? 
Uh, Mark Brennan, how do you vote? Dave Sharp. Laura Pantani. Laura Pantani, aye. Pia Christensen. Pia Christensen, aye. And David Potter, how do you vote? Aye. Motion to approve the minutes of uh, September 5th, 2024. Thank you. So the uh, discussion is open now for anything to comment on or ask questions about. These minutes of 9-5. Hearing none, seeing none, let's go to a vote. Pia? Pia Christensen, aye. Laura? Laura Pantani, aye. Dave? Dave Sharp, aye. Mark and David Potter, I vote aye. So we've approved minutes. And uh, we have no new business at this time. So we're going to old business uh, to discuss the special permit number one Pocomtuck Drive, uh, which is in the continued status. Notice hereby given that the Deerfield Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing on Thursday, August 29, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. on an application filed by Barbara Clem for a special permit for property located at 1 Pocomtuck Drive, identified in the assessor's records as Map 135, Lot 5, to allow the operation of a bed and breakfast in the RA district as provided for in the zoning bylaws Chapter 179, Section 2230. And so um, we are in a position now where um, we are advised to reopen the public hearing until we have um, received further information. Um, of, of various nature, as was uh, stated in the previous meeting, there was some additional information that came to the board from the applicant, and um, we also s requested legal uh, opinion, um, which came now in stages. There have been more than one uh, legal opinion given on more than one point. Um, we were initially um, focused on owner-occupied residence, um, and um, uh, in defining that or exploring the definition of that, um, the uh, possibility of um, aligning our decision with uh, seeing who pays taxes, who pays electricity, uh, these types of things were suggested uh, in the legal document, so then more uh, information was requested, some of which was pr uh, provided by the applicant. Right? And so uh, that should be in this posted packet for the public to have observed. And so um, it will cause us to reopen the public hearing uh, to acknowledge and discuss this material and have the public with the ability to comment as well. And then at that point, um, as the protocol goes, we close that public hearing um, or public comment section um, and um, it is the public hearing to, that is closed, and then we have deliberation, okay? And so um, I, I do feel it's, uh, it may be helpful um, uh, for this meeting to um, uh, explain that, you know, we understand that not everybody uh, who comes and attends uh, public meetings is aware and uh, well-versed in the open meeting laws. And so we just ask of you to, um, uh, you know, acknowledge, uh, respect basically, and you know, understand that uh, we do uh, have protocol and laws. It's not just routine and culture, but we have laws that uh, dictate the steps of the meeting. And so, when the public comment section is closed, um, that is the end of hearing um, and considering any public comment or questions. Um, if you have concerns about um, protocol, order of events, um, you know, whatever you may disagree with, uh, please explore those outside of this meeting with administrative folks and other people on the select board if you have some uh, questions or you'd like to, um, you know, involve in, a, in an appeal of some sort. 
um, or just to educate yourself further uh, about the nature of how things go in these meetings. Um, so uh, at that point, when we deliberate, um, it is not incumbent upon us to assess every point that was brought forward. In fact, we don't have any obligation to address any points that were you know, um, uh, shared with us that's just public comment, that's all. And so obviously, if you've been aware of these meetings and involved, you see that we do, for the most part, um, consider every aspect. Um, so we appreciate all the public comment, but um, I'm gonna proceed now um, to reopen. Uh, do we need a motion for this, Amy? Um, can't hurt. Can't hurt. I'll accept a motion to reopen the public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing. Second. Okay, thank you. That was Dave Sharp and seconded by Mark Brennan. Uh, and so the public hearing is now open. And so um, I guess. Probably vote on it. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Should we just so. limit this to uh, two minutes per person? Should, uh, should we limit it to two, two minutes per person? In the, well, we have uh, applicant time typically, and we have. Uh, for the public, the public comment. For public comment. Two, two minutes per person public comment would, would, would be my request. Anybody else? It's been advised that um, a uniform limitation on public comment is um, a, a legally sound way to proceed, and that, um, um, you know, I think as we saw last time, uh, the, 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 there was a, an instance right off the bat where somebody thought they would go longer and in fact was uh, perfectly appropriate. Um, and I think that it's, it's uh, you know, completely justifiable in my, life, my mind to, to limit people. Uh, so that we can typically fit as many people in as possible and not change the rules from time to time given the size of the audience. So I think we should make it a policy of this committee then that it's a two minute public comment limit unless otherwise agreed. There may be some, something that comes before us where we have a consensus that we may want more than that. But I'm just saying so that we don't have to vote every single time on, every single time we have a meeting, we don't have to vote on the two minute rule. That's all I'm saying. I don't think we need to vote on it. Anymore. Yeah. Okay. As the chair, you need to, yeah. Would be. At some point, we could we could uh, put that on the agenda to um, to consider fully in that way and make a vote, make a policy. Um, but at this point, we're just in the discussion phase of um, the motion to reopen the public hearing. No further comments. Questions? Okay. Um, let's take a vote to reopen the public hearing. Kia. Kia Christensen, aye. Laura. Laura Pantani, aye. Dave. Dave Sharp, aye. Mark. Mark Brennan. And David Potter, I vote aye. So the public hearing is open. Uh, we'll start again with the applicant. If you want to approach the table and explain um, anything uh, about what you've presented to us. Mm -hmm. Uh, after the last meeting um, and take any questions. After the last meeting? Or uh, no, uh, no, I, I misspoke. Since since we last heard from you. So Which was? Two meetings ago, two meetings in, ago. in actuality. So, so what do you want me to explain? Is that uh, right? Well, if you care to make any comment, uh, we received a letter from uh, Jack Clem. That's correct. My son, yes. Uh, so, um, also, you uh, sent in something well. to clarify some some of the Facts. issues that came up. Yes. Um, did you also provide this uh, electric bill? Yes, that's correct. Okay, um, and this shows. Uh, that it is sent to you, at the address. There's an oil bill sent to you from Sandry. Right, and there is also mm, trash, which is online, so I, I have no bills. I just have email sent. And the applicant also submitted a, um, a letter again too to the, to the board. Yes. Okay. Uh, like the, an not, email. Not, uh, whatever you want to call it, email letter. I just want to acknowledge that that also is 
something that was, was received mm -hmm. subsequent to August 29th. Correct. Understood. Right. To the Zoning Board of Appeals, I'm writing in regard to my application to offer a and b that, um, yeah. Uh, so do we wish these to be read aloud? I mean, they're part of the posted minutes. I think we, we can all have uh, assured that people had an opportunity to read them and then we can discuss them. We have also electronically recorded document, the Franklin County Registry of Deeds. All of these documents have been posted um, for the public um, 48 hours in advance. Absolutely. I'm just curious whether um, Jack Clem, your, your son, ever actually lived in the property. I'm sorry, David, can you speak a little closer to the microphone? I can't hear you. I beg pardon. I'm just, I'm just curious, and I'm not, not that it's um, determinative of anything. I'm just curious whether your son ever lived in the property, said that he bought it in 2021. His primary residence is in Miami. Right. So right. he comes, whenever he comes here, he stays, obviously. Yeah. In this property on Pocompec Drive. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody have any further questions for the applicant? Okay. Thank you very much. So we'll go to public comment. Um, Amy will keep the time for two minutes. Um, and um, please approach the table if you'd like to have public comment and use the microphone. Go ahead. Um, yeah, and, and we do need you to speak your name and address into the microphone. My name is Scott Sawyer. I live at 7 Pocumtuck Drive. It's about three houses down from the applicant's home. Spoke earlier a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also an attorney. Um, and I'm really um, surprised at the uh, attempt at constructing language uh, in suing a very plain language statute, which is uh, the public law regarding uh, owner occupied. Uh, you know, these are the rules that we all went to town meeting and special town meetings and we all voted on and agreed on. And I think the meaning of owner occupied um, is very plain language. Um, I was a little surprised the board um, you know, retained an attorney and incurred taxpayer money to get an opinion on a very plain language statute. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you did, because I don't think there's any doubt now. Um, I just want to um, ask the board to um, be a little more fair. I know it, it may get a little contentious and loud, that's just emotional, but on, on procedures and limiting people with two minutes in advance is um, it's not really a perception of fairness on our side uh, of the issue. And um, it's about all I have to say. I just um, just want to remind you that the language is, is very plain language statute. It says owner occupied. There's no separate definition of owner occupied. It says when that's not provided further in the regulations that the plain language rules. Um, thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rick Weinman. I live to Pocumtuck, across the street from the applicant. Um, I just want to make a comment on the first meeting. It seemed, if I remember right, that a couple of board members um, were of the opinion that that because of some other decision made for some other community, that they had to be uniform and. Um, <coughs> 
and whatever the decision was, that they should treat all communities the same. Um, I seem to remember David you didn't agree with that. Um, but I just want to speak to that concept as being ridiculous. How can you consider all communities to be the same? It seems very narrow minded and and very, you know, um, um, arrogant in respect to the people living in these communities that that their individual needs are not going to be taken into account. Um, I, I don't know where such a concept comes from that that you know that all of this has to be the same when each community is unique. Um, I mean, you wouldn't treat downtown Deerfield the same way you would treat a rural community. They're not even zoned the same. Um, um, I, I can think of a million situations where it's absurd to treat everything the same. So that's, that's my only comment. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody on the screen would like to make public comment? I don't see any raised hands. Okay, all right. Last call. Okay, thank you. We're going to close the public comment section. Um, and Sorry. Hello? Uh, yes, it's, would you like, like to make yeah, I am so sorry, because of course we talked about technical difficulties and as you can see, my face is totally frozen. So I'm calling on my phone. Can you hear me okay? Perfect uh, yeah. timing, Michelle. <laughs> yeah, I've got like everything open in the world. I feel like I'm back in the classroom and everything's failing. Um, I just have a, a question. I don't know if I'm allowed to ask questions. Am I allowed to ask questions? We're not obliged to answer, but yeah, you feel free. But to I ask. could ask, okay, all right. So I know that there there was there were additional documents related to who pays the taxes and electricity, and for me it seems is that like a um, is that in lieu of being an owner that's okay if you pay electricity and taxes because I imagine that even when you rent something and you're not the owner of course you may be paying for the electricity and a portion of the taxes as well. So I'm just curious as to where that was going. I don't know if you can answer that. I don't think that we're prepared to answer that right now, Michelle, but I you know we may consider it in our discussions. Um, okay. So thank you. Okay, good enough. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait another moment for that other maybe disconnected person. Everybody online have a chance to make public comment. Okay. All right. So then we'll uh, be through with the public comment. The public hearing is now closed. And we will- um, I believe you need to vote on that. <laughs> I think it's- Second. Amy, is it to close public comment or the public hearing? Not sure about public comment, but certainly um, public hearing. Might as well do both just to be safe. Second. Thank you, Mark. And for Dave, the second. Uh, any comment on closing the public hearing and comment? Okay, we'll take a vote. Mark Brennan. Dave. David Potter, I vote aye. Laura Pontani, aye. Tia Christensen, aye. Thank you. The motion carries. Um, and so now we're in our deliberations um, standpoint. Um, so Motion to close uh, the, the hearing. I'm sorry? Motion to close the hearing. You closed public comment, yes? I'm, I'm sorry, did I miss this? The, the motion that just passed was a motion to close public mm -hmm. comment or a motion to close the hearing? Both. Both. Sure. Both. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Thank you. So, um, There's a uh, further legal opinion that we're still waiting for. Um, one thing led to another, and with the uh, provision of the deed, questions arose um, pertaining to language specific in the deed. Um, so uh, it seems that we ought to perhaps continue again, um, but 
It's certainly up for discussion. I think that, um, you know, playing the closest and the most conservative way um, would be to wait on that and, and minimize uh, the liability for the town, as unfortunate as it may be. Is there also, I, I thought we were also potentially looking at another issue around the accessory units language of our bylaws. And I don't know if our Bob, our building inspector, wanted to talk about that or whether we're also just to be up front, we're seeking a legal opinion on that issue as well. Or am I mistaken? Well, just that it came to light that oh, under home occupation by right you are allowed to board up to two people but once again what does that fully mean is that you know what how what period of time is it nightly I, like i don't have a good answer so but that is allowed by right that did that was one thing that was brought to light and it's pretty clear that that ability to, to board people is an accessory use to a single family dwelling. But I think we need some better clarity on that. But and that, that's about all I'd wish to weigh in on that. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's um, that's kind of what I'm led to believe is that, that um, we ought to not get back into this discussion without having all the the legal opinion um that's coming our way it uh it wouldn't make any sense um and uh you know i don't know if anybody wants to converse ask questions you know talk about the matters at hand what we've got here um um i'm i'm going to suggest you might want to continue um, to deliver, continue to a future date, continue your deliberations to a future date when you have um, the legal opinion. Thank you. To continue the hearing. You're not continuing the hearing, you're continuing, continuing the deliberations. deliberations, yes. Hearing is closed. I have a second. Uh, do we have any idea how long that will be? Um, you need to decide on a date. Um, October 3rd is open, October 10th is open, and October 17th are open. The last time we had only one week, and it, it squeaked in, but all of those are longer than one week, so. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, please speak into the microphone. I really can't hear. Apologies, October 3rd is uh, high holiday, Rosh Hashanah. Oh, I apologize. I should know that. Um, so yeah, I would say the 10th or the 17th. Yeah, me too, and I think we should try to make a decision here for our applicant and mm -hmm. neighbors and yeah. Yeah, on the 10th it works for me. Yeah, it works for me as well. Okay. Um, Do we feel like we'll get the all the information that we need by that date? I, I, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. I yeah. asked if we thought we'd get all the information by that date. Um, I We can certainly ask that they uh, get it to us. I'm just recognizing the stress of the community and how they might be feeling. So mm -hmm. to keep having to come back. Understood. Um, and it's almost three weeks, isn't it? Or two and a bit, two and a half. We should have it. Yeah. That should be plenty of time. Yeah. I mean, they already know about it. They're already involved, so. Um, and can we say a meeting time earlier than 7.30? Um, it may eliminate one of our members, but um, if 
Try to let them commit to it here. Sure. But I, I think we'd be perfectly fine. Um, I would just say that I, I probably would have taken the guilty if I could. Um, and I'm just saying Gabby can never do her force ever story. Oh. She said that during, mm. during field interviews. Oh. oh, is that what it is? So, so yeah. On the other hand, she's now, well, well she's always working these cases with the public defender. Okay. Uh, yeah. Can I just say that um, Gabby could rejoin by watching the videotape and um, signing a Mullins affidavit. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't want to rule her out. Um, I'm not sure if you need five people to make this decision. Why don't we go with 7.30 then on the 10th? I, we're, let's just do 7.30. Yeah, 30. I think so. so. I will sign Mark's motion then to continue the deliberative phase of the hearing until October 10th at 7.30. Any discussion? Comments or questions? Okay, let's vote. Tia Christensen, aye. Laura Pontani, aye. David Potter, aye. Okay, motion passes. We'll see you back here again, uh, if you choose, on October 10th at 7.30.